Uh, I want to welcome everybody to our first event for, I can't believe, 2012. I, rem I, I unfortunately remember when uh, we were rolling up on 1984, and that was going to be a big deal. Um, this morning's presentation is, I think, going to be informative, productive. Uh, we have a, a, a very special guest, my friend Annette Kramer from London. She is an excellent coach. Uh, any company learning how to present for purposes of investment or product development and endorsement, uh, she's, she's a whiz. And uh, she'll be Skyping in from London in a little while. Um, first thing I would like to do is to thank our sponsors. Uh, without them, none of this would be possible. Uh, yes, we are always looking for new sponsors and new companies to get involved with us. Uh, we do support our sponsors, and some of them, uh, besides the breakfast, do support us as well in various aspects. There are some uh, dramatic new things coming up from former HVCFI and, and, and now ICANN, which I think over the coming weeks and months are going to play out and do some wonderful things for both our organization, the Hudson Valley, and New York State and beyond. Uh, we're, we're taking some steps to move what has been a traditional not-for-profit industry, which is incubation and acceleration, into a for-profit, sustainable, actual business. Um, incubation and acceleration have for all intents and purposes, been almost exclusively dependent on subsidies and grants for their existence. It's no way to run a business. It's not a business. Uh, so we are trying to change some of those paradigms and move not only our organization, but the future of that industry to an entirely different level. So you'll be hearing lots more in the coming weeks and months. What I'd like to do is, is, is start off this year with some information um, about part of this industry, which is blossoming and mushrooming, uh, I think beyond a lot of people's expectations, and that's social marketing, internet marketing, digital development, and where everything fits into this. Uh, the U.S. Department of Commerce recently delivered to Congress a comprehensive report on the competitive, competitiveness and innovative capacity of the United States. And that report sort of is a call to arms, if you will, highlighting uh, what we could be doing, what we should be doing to promote and sustain American innovation and economic competitiveness. They came up with a couple of initial objectives. One was federal investments in research, education, and infrastructure were critical building blocks for American economic competitiveness, business expansion, and job creation. And that, of course, is always a slippery slope when you, call, when you, when, when you consider grants, when you consider additional appropriations, especially in an election year. Uh, how is that going to affect what we do? How much can we depend on outside stimulus for our own business development? Second they came up with was failures to properly invest in and have comprehensive strategies for those areas that have eroded America's competitive position. Well, you know, we gave a lot of manufacturing away we would love to recapture a lot of manufacturing. We'd love to be the place where innovation is exhibited and demonstrated and manufactured and bought and sold and once again become the innovation leaders of the earth. And I think we have the wherewithal to make that happen. The third thing they came up with, in a constrained budgetary environment, Prioritizing support for these pillars is imperative for America's economic future and will provide a strong return on investment for the U.S. taxpayer. We'll leave that one alone. 
uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting. One of the things, as you know, that we do is find and help find funding for a lot of our companies that we get involved with. In uh, mid-December, we had a meeting up in Albany with our iClean partners and advisors, and a lot of you in the room were invited to that meeting. And at that meeting, you saw some of the 17 companies now that we're involved with, with iClean, in new innovations, new technologies, new developments. And that's just really the beginning. That's just after our first year of operation with these two organizations, uh, ICANN and the Nanotech Center up in Albany. And I can tell you, innovation, it ain't dead. It's growing. Uh, there's a tremendous amount coming out of our universities, out of either necessity or just pure inspiration. Entrepreneurship is alive and well. And we want to help find companies monies. We want to find them opportunities, both domestically and internationally, in order to benefit all of us, because it becomes an ecosystem. In the digital world, we call this, I mean, most things happen through word of mouth. I tend to like to call it word of mouse. It's a powerful tool to gain a whole new set of customers. A new era of marketing is unfolding, and digital marketing helps you and your objective to influence behaviors and change marketing strategies for you. The audience who need your product and services are increasingly searching for them online. Uh, there was a statistic that 92% of online adults use search engines to find the information on the web. 92%. That's a far cry from when our parents and grandparents uh, went looking through the yellow pages. Remember the yellow pages? We used to sit on them when we were little so we could reach the table. Uh, they've, I haven't seen the yellow pages in a, in, a, in a long time. The five C's of content creation and delivery methodology have varying results depending upon how you use them. Now, we've had many discussions on social and internet marketing over the years. Sarah and I were talking on the way up that it might be a, a really good idea. Some of you might remember we had a gentleman who lives locally who is the regional business development director for LinkedIn. Uh, this might be a great time to bring him back because a lot of people get on LinkedIn, just as an example, but aren't really sure how to use it. So this might be a good time to bring him back now that all of us are developing more of an understanding of both the actual use and implications and desired outcomes for social and internet marketing. So let's go through some of the five C's. And I apologize for the amount of content on the screen, but you're going to have to live through it. Um, the rules for search engine optimization uh, as we are finding out here at, at ICON, are, are changing almost every day. Uh, as my friend Al will, will let us know uh, at some point when he makes a presentation, these, these, are, these are changing rules. The, the way you reach customers has changed. If we now know that 92% of all adults get their information online, well, duh, that's how we have to reach them. That's how we have to get to them. That's how we have to influence them. So I hope you're all reading this while I, while I discuss this, because I'm not going to read the screen. Uh, if anybody wants any of this content later on, just let me know. I'll be happy to send it to you. Uh, a lot of this information is getting you and your website on to major search engines. And there are lots of ways to do this. There is not one way that's better than another way that's better than another way. But as I mentioned, the rules are changing daily, and keeping up with them is darn near a full-time job. Communications. Uh, communications is a very interesting topic and one that I'm personally enamored with. Uh, it's important for you to get email branded with your business name, your logo showing, in order to instill 
uh, credibility, and con the consistency of your message is very important. Uh, as in with these breakfasts, we send out invitations, as I'm sure you're all ready to hate me for, three times before we actually convene. And it's very interesting to see the analytics and statistics on who responds to the invitations and when. I gotta tell you, I got a lot of responses last night. <laughs> so it's very interesting to see what people commit to, when they commit, and if there are dollars involved, how they commit, and what the implications of all of this communications is. The other thing that's very important is you, as business owners, communicating with your customers, have to understand how your customers communicate. What might be the best way to get their attention? I do know one company that does not have a website. They will only accept communications from me on a telephone. That's fine. No email. No nothing. Just call me on the phone. Well, that, that, that works great in most cases, but not for everyone. So find out how your customers want to be approached, want to be communicated with. I must also confess that, confess that we have some customers that, frankly, I've never met face to face. It's only been email, it's been Skype, it's been telephone, uh, it's, it's, it's been lots of different ways to communicate. A sense of community. Um, the sense of community is, to me, as, as you know, having done what we're doing here for, for six years here in the Hudson Valley, very important. Um, get involved in your community. Other networking events, other community-based events. Uh, my friend Ralph Mitchell is on the radio darn near every morning. Uh, complaining about something. And, and that's one way to keep yourself engaged and involved. And even charity work, uh, not-for-profit work, get engaged with your customers on a non-business level. It helps tremendously. Uh, the networking uh, is, is critical. What you learn, what you do, plus it's a good feeling at the end of the day to get involved. Cutting edge technologies. Well, you know, this is far and away the way business is being done. Uh, I'm sure everyone in this room has a computer, has hooked up to the internet. Uh, most of you have smartphones. Uh, the technology development, the, the technology convergence is absolutely at the core of what we do. Learning is different, the way people buy is different. You can look at the statistics, the end of the year statistics on retail purchases off the internet. Uh, it's skyrocketing. It's not coming back to the way it was. There are chains that have developed their entire marketing strategies no longer around walk-in traffic but digital strategies. Um, I'll show you one in just, just a moment. Conversion. Well, to me, that is absolutely the most important thing we as business owners have to think about. You know who your customer is. You see people come online, getting to your website, learning who you are, learning what you do. How do you convert that customer? No. How do you convert that contact into a customer? They're not a customer until somebody, somebody pays you to do something. It's just that simple. There are friends, there are contacts, there are acquaintances, there are associates. They don't become a customer until somebody writes a check or sends you some money. And that, at the end of the day, is what we're all about. This is uh, a, a, a strategy that we should all consider, that conversion ratio of being friends versus a customer. Uh, here's, here's the example I'll just point out to you. Um, the first time Starbucks noticed this convergence and intersection was on Star what Starbucks called Free Pastry Day. 
Free Pastry Day occurred last summer. Anybody remember Free Pastry Day or did anybody participate? Very interesting. It was only done on Facebook. And it was only done on Facebook and it said if you take a print a coupon off of our Facebook page, bring it to a Starbucks, they will give you a free pastry. Well, the director of social media for Starbucks commented that he was amazed at the number of people standing in line holding coupons they printed out. The impetus for free pastries was the volume of faithful online Facebook followers asking to be included on new products or other company news. The net result was Facebook, Starbucks participation increased from 4 million to 7.75 million Facebook followers within 24 hours. It's staggering. It's a staggering num number of people. It was word of mouth, then getting online to Facebook, getting their coupons, and visiting the store and buying something. Yes, they got the pastry, the overwhelming majority, bought a cup of coffee or a water to go with it. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of validity to this, there's a lot of structure to this, there's a lot of impetus for you to get more involved in learning how to do it. Um, a selfless plug, if anybody needs help, uh, we have some, some marvelous uh, experts that work with us on a daily basis for our website, for our social and internet media, uh, connectivity on a worldwide basis. ICANN right now is affiliated with 25 search engines with another 75 being uh, considered right now worldwide. And we are a small organization, but you know, as W.C. Fields once said, never show them what you haven't got. And doing business online and doing business digitally says to the world that you're in business now to attract those customers or the contacts, bringing them in, converting them to customers, that's the secret sauce. And um, we think we've got a pretty good formula and we'd be happy to share it with anybody 